Okay, so today I'm going to show you my shop press and how I built a few features into it that I think you may find useful in your own if you decide to build one yourself. So, come over here. I used to have just a regular um, 20 ton bottle jack, it was hand crank, and I used that for about five years uh, before I upgraded to an air over hydraulic system. And the air over hydraulic uh, works just as well, um, and it's a whole lot less work to get anything done. This is something that I want to show you. So the release valve on all of these jacks is just a, uh, a screw with a pin through the side of it. And what I did is I took a socket that just fits over it and cut a slit in it. And then I got one of these little hand wheels, put it on there, and I just leave this on the jack all the time so I can release the pressure and tighten it back up. This was made with angle iron for guides instead of uh, tubes or pipes because I didn't have any that would work. And these are recycled trampoline springs. So um, let me, yeah, there are a couple of things that I do that are probably not as normal. One is I don't have press plates that are made out of steel or cast iron or anything. I actually use these blocks of cypress. And here's another one. I uh, put them together and drilled a hole in it. You can cut these in the sides, whatever you want. I've used these same plates for five years and I've never actually broken one. Um, granted, I've run the grain front to back spanning, spanning the rails so that it doesn't crack. Uh, it will deform, it will crush the grain, but it won't break and it won't let your parts slip. Another thing I did was I welded a uh, rather large socket adapter to the bottom of this plate because every press I've ever used, I use sockets to drive bearings in or out and stuff like that. So I can just put an adapter on there and use it as a press uh, to press stuff in and out or use a uh, piece of plate or angle iron under it if I need to flatten anything. And I also don't have pins in the side because I used round tube. So I welded these angle iron brackets to both tubes and I only have two positions for my shelf and I've never needed anything else. You can stack wood up if you need it to be shorter or uh, pull it out. I've never needed to do anything deeper than where it's set right now. The airline just hooked up to the shop air and just drives down like that. I don't have a press brake for making angles, but I'll, uh, I'll get set up and show you how I do that without having a dedicated jig. So I just put three pieces of angle iron up here in order to uh, bend stuff and make a 90. There we go. And I'll show you. Springs automatically pull the uh, weight of the entire piece up, and I've just got a few captive uh, parts on it to hold it in place, keep it from sliding out, and the top of it is captivated by a couple pieces of angle iron. And now here, 
is my 9B. It's uh, not exactly precision, but it works. So one of the main things I use my shop press for is making these fire grates. And these are made out of three quarter by three quarter solid steel bar stock. And I do all the bends in this press. I have a jig that holds it all together, weld it up and it's all done. So let me show you bending some of that, um, some of that three quarter bar stock. So this is the jig I made for it. There is the uh, die down here is a press. There's alignment bars in the back to keep it centered. And there's a couple different marks for length. So if this piece were the actual length that needed to be, I would use this for the pieces that go front to back and use this for the legs or bends on them are a little bit longer. So I've got it aligned and let's go ahead and just bent piece with uh, some of the mill scale falling off and I'd put the other end in, bend it and have a piece ready to use.